So you've been thinking about buying a home in Bellingham, Washington, but you would pause your search due to high interest rates. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you five reasons why I believe now could be the perfect time for you to purchase your home in Bellingham, and you're gonna to wanna to stick around for item number five because it specifically addresses the concern of high interest rates. We're gonna get started right now. <laughs> Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you can keep up on all the content that we're releasing about Bellingham, about Whatcom County, and all the great things that are going on here in this area. My name is Jeff Engen. I'm with MJB Real Estate Group here in Bellingham, and every day we get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you who are considering a move to this area, and we absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking about moving tomorrow, 10 months from now, sometime in between, we encourage you to reach out. All of our contact information can be found below and we are standing by and ready to help in any way that we can. But for now, let's talk about why this is a great time to buy your Bellingham home. So reason number one that now may be a great time for you to consider a purchase in Bellingham is home prices. Uh, home prices are down somewhat dramatically over their peak in June of 2022. So according to Redfin, we go back to June of 2022, the average selling price of a single family home in Bellingham was $763,000. Now fast forward to December of 22, that average sales price of a single family home in Bellingham was $670,000. Now if we take into consideration all types of homes, so not just single family, but if we're talking about townhomes, condos, manufactured homes, um, everything that falls under the umbrella of residential real estate. We had an average selling price in June 22 of $687,000, which is now down closing out the year in December to $610,000. So somewhere in that 10 to some odd 12% reduction in price. Uh, this is fantastic. And when you're going in and you're writing an offer on a home, you're not in most cases in this market going to be including an escalation addendum with your offer. An escalation addendum, basically you come in with an offer and you say, hey, we'd really like to pay X, but if there's competing offers that are offering more than us, we're willing to increase our offer to Y. That is what drove a lot of the market and a lot of the price increase uh, over much of the last two years is we've had this basic issue of supply and demand where the demand for homes was so high and the supply was so low that people were willing to pay in many cases $100,000 or more over the list price on a home. You're not going to do that today. To the contrary, you actually, I've, I just had clients here a couple months back that got their uh, new home under contract for 50,000 less than the current list price of the home. And there had already been two price reductions on that home. Now, you could argue that that home was not priced appropriately from the jump, but the fact remains that home prices are down. And in some cases, you're getting these homes for even less than they're currently listed for on the market. Item number two on the list is competition or lack thereof. Now, if we were to go back some odd months ago, a year ago, 18 months ago, you're gonna be in a situation where we're listing homes on a Thursday, we're reviewing offers on a Monday, and we've got three, five, seven, 10, 15 offers on a home. Uh, that is not the case in this current market. Uh, a lot of people were previously pre-approved, uh, maybe in the 3%, the three and an eighth, three and a quarter interest range, whereas when things shifted over a relatively short period of time and shot up into the fives, then the sixes and nearly 7%, uh, compare and contrast, it's a, it's a vastly different affordability for that person. And so I think perspective has a lot to do with what has slowed down the market. If we look at rates from a historical perspective, you know, rates for much of 2010 to 2020 hovered in between four and 5%. Those were average rates, those were good rates. So when we talk about getting into the fives, maybe even getting into the sixes, it's really not that significant comparative to what a lot of people's perspective is with regards to rates previously being as low as, you know, 2.85%, 2.5%, which again, we've talked about this in other videos, uh, was A, probably unnecessary and unbeneficial in the grand scheme of things, and B, has again, just skewed perspective with regards to what home affordability should look like. So, because a lot of people found themselves in that situation and because they were previously pre-approved at such a phenomenal interest rate and now compare and contrast feel like rates are so terrible, despite the fact they're actually not that bad, 
Uh, that's pulled a lot of the competition out of the market. Number three is you've got more options and more inventory that's on the market. Now, a lot of this has to do and directly correlates, and these, these things all kind of correlate together, right? But it correlates with item number two. You've got less competition, which is resulting in more inventory, uh, more days on market for homes. According to Redfin, at the peak of the market, we had uh, homes on market for an average of six days six days so we list thursday we review the following week we get multiple offers the home goes under contract for well over the listed price and the sellers and the buyers are, are off to the races to get that home closed and move forward versus today we're seeing average days on market in the mid 20s 22 25. in some cases some homes are sitting on the market for three months. Now, sometimes this is with regards to the price of the home and maybe it not being appropriate based on the current market conditions. But as an example, I've got clients who just got a home under contract in a core Bellingham neighborhood closed here about uh, six some odd eight weeks ago for $50,000 less than the list price. Now on that home in particular, there had already been two price reductions from the time that they originally came on market. My clients were still able to get that home for 50,000 less than the current list price. More options in this situation. You're going to buy the home that you love and the home that you want as opposed to the home that you will settle for. I had clients back in the heat of the market back in the early part of uh, 2022 who were literally writing offers on any home in any core Bellingham neighborhood under a certain price threshold. It didn't matter the condition, the age, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms. They were phenomenally flexible in what they were willing to purchase as long as it fit their budget. That's not the situation that you're going to find yourself in today. You're going to be able to take your time. You're going to be able to find a home that you really love, uh, and you're going to be able to make an offer on that home that is reasonable for you and reasonable for the seller. Dovetails really nicely into item number four, which is more favorable contracts. So when we talk about the heat of the market, when we talk about things being really crazy during much of 2021 and much of 2022, here's what a stereotypical uh, circumstance might look like as far as writing an offer on a home. You're probably coming in knowing that there's other competition. You're probably going to uh, do things like write an escalation. You're probably going to do things like waive your contingencies, whether that's your inspection, whether that's your financial contingency, whether that's your seller's disclosure. You're probably going to do things like making your earnest money non-refundable. These are things that buyers were employing anything they could do to get to get leverage against the number of competing offers they knew they were going to be up against they would do. Now, compare and contrast, we're in a market where, again, these homes are sitting on the market for 20 some odd, 30 some odd days. You come in as a buyer, you retain your contingencies, you have some seller concessions, um, and buyers are happy to work with you and, and excited to receive your offer because, again, it's, it's just a very different market than it was a short time ago. And so for you as the buyer to be able to have kind of the safety net of having a home inspection, to have the safety net of retaining your financial contingency, which essentially means if you can't get financing, if something falls through at the last minute, you're not on the hook for buying this home. It's a great market to be a buyer because the contracts are going to be much more in your favor than they would have been again, much of 2021 and 2022. Item number five, again, this is the one that specifically addresses the problem of high interest rates. And I'm not going to jump into uh, a big full-fledged explanation of what a temporary rate buy-down looks like. We'll pop a video up here. If you've not watched it before, you can go find uh, a, a great explanation of what it looks like to employ a temporary buy-down. But something like a 2-1 buy-down, if, if your only obstacle, and, and arguably it is, in the current market is interest rates, We've got a solution for that. Lenders are happy to work with you. Sellers are happy to work with you. The short version is that if today interest rates are six and a half percent, a two one buy down is going to look to reduce your interest rate two full percentage points in the first year of your mortgage and one full percentage point in the second year of your mortgage. So you're going to go from a six and a half interest rate in year one down to four and a half percent. And you're going to go from a six and a half interest rate in year two down to five and a half percent. Again, Cliff notes, uh, you know, 30,000 foot explanation of what's going on there, but encourage you to take a look at this video uh, that will dive in much more detail and explain a temporary buy down to you. 
something you should definitely be looking to employ to take advantage of the conditions of the market and also combat your main concern, which is probably interest rates. The last thing that I want to share, just compare and contrast, uh, you know, to what was happening in June of 22 versus what was happening in December of 22. So I've already shared some of these uh, figures with you in terms of these home prices, but let's put some context to it. So if you would have bought a home for the average price, the average single family home price in June of 22 for $763,000, you would have gone under that uh, under contract on that home sometime in the month of May. Well, looking back historically, interest rates probably were hovering right below 5% uh, back in May of 2022. So let's say that you had an interest rate of 4.99% on your $763,000 home purchase May of 22. Well, you would have putting 20% down on that loan been required to bring about $151,000 to the table in terms of your down payment and your closing costs. And your monthly mortgage would have been right around $3,502 per month. Now compare and contrast, if we look at December of 22 and we look at uh, you know the average sales price of a single family home at $670,000, uh, and let's use the interest rate, we're right about where we are now, of 6.5%. Well, your uh, contribution at closing would be $134,000, so that's your down payment and closing costs at 20% down, comparative to $151,000 back in June, and your monthly mortgage payment would be about $3,578. So uh, approximately, what is that? $76, let's call it, per month, more expensive today from a monthly mortgage payment uh, than it would have been back in June, but you're saving money on your down payment. And again, would strongly suggest, if you're not familiar with the temporary buy-down, to go watch that video because we could take that 3578 monthly payment on your purchase now and reduce it by hundreds of dollars per month in the first year and hundreds of dollars per month in the second year to make it a no-brainer compare and contrast. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Five reasons why I believe now is a great time for you as a prospective home buyer to be active in this market. Um, as always, encourage you to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and also encourage you to reach out. Again, all of our contact information can be found below. If you have any questions about anything that I've shared, if you're interested in jumping into the market, um, if you need clarification, if you need help, anything that we can do, we're standing by and would love to speak with you. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Happy 2023 and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon.